Good morning, everybody. I've come down to a beach on the west coast. I think it's called Yunui Beach. The interesting thing with this place is there's a rocky outcrop just sticking out and there's this kind of sandy spit going out to it. So I want to see if I can capture this properly and capture a nice photograph of it. I am testing a tripod from Suray as well, so I'm going to put that through its paces. For this first composition, I'm thinking I'll use the spit as leading lines up to this rocky outcrop. The problem with this is I've got that island in the background and it kind of interferes with the rocky outcrop. It would almost be better without that island, but obviously I can't move that, so that's something I've just got to deal with. I've also got a few friends. If you look down here, these dogs are digging up the little crabs probably trying to get some breakfast. I'm shooting with a 15 millimeter again on my a7 III and I'm just going to see what composition I can get here. Now one good thing about this tripod is that these locking collars are actually waterproof so once you've done them up technically no water should get into the legs of the tripod and this is one of those things that hampers tripods. If you take them in the sea and water gets inside the legs and it kind of rots the tripod from within. So it's good that Suray have done this, and as long as you rinse it off afterwards, it should be good. So that light is changing all of the time. I'm on F16, half a second, ISO 50, and I'm just waiting for those waves to come together. Might try a vertical composition on this one as well, just to try and get an emphasis of these leading lines up to that point. With shots like this, it's just a case of waiting for the right conditions. I'm firing off so many and seeing what I can get. So there may be some waves that are really small that don't come really close, then others that really come into your frame. So you really do have to be patient when you're taking shots like this. The sun still hasn't come up, so I'm not getting the light that I want just yet, but it's good kind of looking for compositions now. There we go. Oh, is that it? Nope. Nope. It seems like I get one from one side and then one from the other side, but it's waiting for when I get both at the same time. There's one on the left. That one's quite cool. But not one on the right. Oh, there was one. Hmm. So this shot's not really working how I want it to, so I think I'm just going to walk down the beach, see what else I can get. Still waiting for that sunlight to come out, and still waiting for it to light my subject, which is basically this rocky outcrop. The problem with this one is I've got that island in the background. It's kind of confusing the shot a little bit. So let's talk details. The upper parts of the leg are 2.6 centimeters thick, so it feels solid and chunky. But with that triangular center column, when packed away, it feels smaller than it should. Folded up with a ball head, it's 22 and a half inches, which is 57 centimeters long. At its tallest, it's 67 inches, which is 170 centimeters, with that center column extended. Without the center column, it's 55 inches, which is 140 centimeters. And at its lowest height, it can be set to 44 centimeters. But this doesn't really matter because you can invert that center column so you can pretty much have your camera as close to the ground as you want. The legs play out with three different angles and these clips lock out, making it easier to adjust. There are plenty of levels on the ball head as well and also one on the top of the tripod so you can get the base of the head level easily. This sticks out on the side so when you attach the ball head you can still see this level. On the tripod you have two mounting threads, a quarter inch and a three eighth inch. So the two standard tripod mounting thread sizes. It does have a bag hook as well, although the gap is pretty small, but I was able to hang my camera bag on it. As I've already said, the joints in the legs are waterproof, which is great when using it on the beach. But like with anything used in salt water, make sure you rinse it off in fresh water afterwards. 
Now, if you are a click lock fan and not the twist lock fan, this tripod's probably not for you. But I actually kind of like this. You can turn all three at the same time, pull the whole thing out, and then just tighten the three up quickly. Now, the beach is getting a little bit busier and the sun is rising. So what I'm gonna do is put on an ND filter. I can slow everything down. I can play around with my settings to get the sea looking how I want to. And also in using those longer exposures with an ND filter, I can pretty much blur out the people or get rid of them completely. One thing I really like about wavescapes and basically coming down the beach where there are some decent sized waves is getting an ND filter on to blur the motion of the waves. You can play around with quite short exposure times and get a little bit of motion in there, but you can also see how the wave looks still. Now, one problem with shooting seascapes like this is I'm trying to get that water coming up the beach, but then when it hits the bottom of the legs of the tripod, the tripod does inevitably sink in the sand, and it's gonna happen no matter what tripod you have. So I need to work out my position properly and work out where I'm gonna stand on the beach. I think I'm gonna change up the lens as well. I'm gonna put a 25 millimeter lens on and see how that works. Now, one really good thing to have when you are photographing seascapes like this is a ball head. When the waves come in, they can wash the sand from underneath the legs and you'll find the tripod drifts. Happens with all tripods, there's no getting around it. So with a ball head, if that does happen, you can undo it and you can line it up quickly again. I've got the rule of thirds grid on the back so I can line that top line up with the horizon so I know it's straight. Now one thing I don't like about this Su Ray ball head is that it's got a rubber grip on this one. That's okay in cold weather, but in hot climates like this, Sometimes I've found with other tripods is that the glue gives way underneath that rubber bit after a while. I would have preferred this to be a metal grip, like on this smaller one. That's just one little annoyance that I have with this ball head. But apart from that, the ball head's really nice. You've got this separate twisty bit for the ball-y bit, <laughs> if you can call it that. And then you've got this other bit. So once you've locked it in place, to rotate it, so to give you that pan. Very technical terms there but you know me, I'm a technical guy. So I've just had an idea for a composition and it's lining up the rocky outcrop with the island in the background. I'm gonna do it with a long exposure. So if anyone does walk into my shot, I can get rid of them, but I'm gonna give it a go. Not sure if it's gonna work, but I'll try it out. As with all tripods, you've got these rubber lugs on the bottom and they're great for slippery floors, but when you're on like rocky outcrops like this, you want the metal spikes. Some have them and some don't. Some of them, you take these off and the spikes are there ready to go. With these ones, when you rotate this rubber lug, the metal spike protrudes out. So I'm just gonna get all of those in the right place. So at the moment, I'm using a 10 stop filter I've got my settings at a one second exposure, F7.1, ISO 640. So I'm playing around with the settings. I don't mind shooting with ISOs away from 100. I know I can get a nice clean image. And with a one second exposure, it's gonna blur the water a little bit, but not too much. So now I've got the wired remote in just to make it easier because with the self timer, you can't time it when the waves are in the position that you want to. Whereas now I'm just pressing the shutter button on that shutter release cable when the waves are just on that left side of the frame. So it's coming into frame and then I'll take it now. 
and it gives that nice kind of leading line around to the island. Again, I'm shooting with the 15 millimeter. I'm at one second exposure, ISO 640 and F8. As for focusing, I did focus on the island at the back. So you can see there, just focusing it to that right point there. See, with, if the waves are really small and you take the shot, it's not so good. But when the bigger waves come in and really wash up, they create a nice arcing line around and into the shot. Now the sun's up, it's getting ridiculously hot but I've got one more composition in mind before I'm gonna finish this photo shoot. I put the 85 millimeter on and I want a close up of that island now the sun's hitting it. I probably should have got this a bit earlier, but I'm gonna get it now. Again, I've got the 10 stop ND filter on so I can shoot with a really long exposure. I've got my shutter release cable all plugged in and ready to go. I'm gonna kill any ants or any bitey things that walk on my feet. So I've put the island dead center in the frame, shooting with a 15 second exposure, F11 ISO 50. I just wanna smooth out that water as much as possible and see if where we can get the splashing waves on the rocks all smoothed out. So that didn't smooth it out quite enough. So I've changed the settings to F16 ISO 50 and a 30 second exposure. The one other thing I like about this tripod is that it's Arca Swiss compatible. So if you use an L bracket, simple to use. It does come with its own plate, but obviously with an L bracket, you've got the Arca Swiss built in already. So I'll just take this same exposure, but in a vertical composition. Again, I'll put the island bang in the middle. And make sure the horizon's flat. After using the Sure tripod for a while, it is a nice solid tripod. Tripods are tripods at the end of the day. They all do a very similar job, but there are certain things that make that job easier. I think Sure have kind of ticked off a few of these on the list. Now, if you are interested in this tripod, I've got a link in the description below, and there there's a discount code as well. 